Hey everyone, welcome back to Cart Crazy. Today we're going to be installing a new body kit on our 2012 Club Car Precedent, also known as CCP. Our body kit is what's considered an Alpha by Mad Jacks. It's going to give it a great off-road look as well as some cool styling. So to do that, we need to remove our windshield, our roof struts, our roof, and our seats. Now this comes with a great uh, instruction manual that kind of reads more like an Ernest Hemingway than a Dr. Seuss and to be honest I'm more of a Dr. Seuss kind of guy so I'll probably just flip through the pictures and hope for the best so let's get started alright so we need to remove our upper struts and our windshield and our seats and to do that pretty simple uh, there's some bolts here and these are hidden by some plastic panels which will be revealed once we remove the first bolt. The windshield is pretty straightforward. The roof has six bolts, two of, any, two of those on each side and one in the rear. The seat, the back seat is held on by two bolts and the bottom seat of course just lifts off. So we'll start with that. So we've got the roof removed and about to do the upper strut arms, but the biggest battle of this was removing the windshield. That thing was stuck on there like Dolly Parton's wig and it gave me a bunch of grief, but mainly I just had to keep working it with my thumbs. There's a clip that holds it on um, and just two bolts on the bottom. So you remove the two bolts and just work it off. It's really stuck on these upper arms, so just be aware of that. Next, I remove this plastic bolt on this cap, and underneath here is going to reveal our Torx head bolts, which will remove our upper strut arms for our roof. So we'll tackle that next. Okay, so maybe plan B on this. I realized that these Torx head bolts, because of all the water and slop and everything that goes up in this fender well, they're really tight. I got them loose, but I'm afraid if I keep working them, they, have, they might have a tendency to snap off. And it doesn't look like we need to take them all the way out because we're just clearing the body through here. So I think I'm going to cheat a little bit and actually leave the upper struts in place and just leave them loose. So we'll pull these four bolts out of our cowl piece and we should be able to remove our plastic body. I'll bring you in here and show you what we got going on. So I actually had to remove not only the plastic, but also the cowl underneath. And that will go back on. I had to remove the bumper. There were some bolts on the back side of that that had to be removed in order for that to come off. So you have to pull everything off to do that. I noticed we got some dirt and grime built up under here. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll get the rear seats and the rear body off and then we'll roll it outside and give it a good pressure wash. To remove the rear body you'll remove the four screws from around the corner of the battery compartment two 10 millimeter bolts on each side, two 10 millimeter bolts on each side here, and two long uh, eight millimeter bolts on both sides of the sweater basket. You 
also need to remove the forward and reverse lever. This is an electric cart, obviously, and you'll want to note the sequence of how the wires are plugged in for reassembly. got our body removed you can see the ears of dust and mud and grime built up so you don't have to but me being the perfectionist that I am I'll take this outside pressure wash it get as much dirt and grime as I can off of there and then we'll be ready for our new body assembly why I do this um, there's just so much build up from over the years mud and crud and going through golf courses and it's um, it's just a lot nicer to work on them when they're clean notice I didn't use any soap or anything um, the main objective is here just to knock the mud and the dust off and uh, of course the rest of it can be cleaned later on. All the black can be shined up after the body is installed. But it's just, uh, just something I like to do. You can see the amount of crud we've got on the concrete here. So So I decided to get our headlight assemblies in and I gotta admit, I got the Dr. Seuss book out just to help a little bit, um, just because there's some different length brackets and different things. But these are gonna bolt in and they actually have spring assemblies, which is nice because then you can adjust your headlights up or down depending on what size lift you have uh, to keep them shining in the right direction. So I'll bring you into the back side here and you can watch the process. So a little bit of a tedious process getting the rubber gasket all lined up and then getting the springs for the headlights and kind of holding everything in place. This is um, definitely a plug and play for the headlights which I like. Uh, it's going to make things a lot simpler. I do have the wiring harness that will run through. So that side headlight is done and we will repeat the process for the other side. Headlights installed. Seem to fit pretty decent. They have a nice rubber gasket around the edge that you kind of have to work in and conform a little bit, but for the most part I'm happy with it. This body kit does have the grill which goes on independently. However, I don't know if you can pick up on it in the camera here, but it is like a totally different white than what the body is. This is almost like an off-white. The body is um, more of a bright white. I did contact the salesman and they are sending me a replacement grill that will hopefully match a little better. But just for experiment, I'm going to give it the old high gloss headache tune-up with some Krylon. I'll give this a nice flat black look, same paint I used on the roof, and if that doesn't work, worst case scenario, I'll wait for the new grill assembly to come in and I'll swap it out, but I think it'll be worth a try, especially with the brush guard and everything that I plan on putting on. It might give it a nice bold look. It might look terrible, but there's really no harm, no foul at this point because like I said, I do have the replacement grill coming, so we'll give that a try and we'll also... Um, get the rear body assembly, the tail lights in that. Got a couple of things done off camera. One of them is I painted our grill assembly and I use this Krylon Color Max. 
the top of the can says no runs, no drips, no errors, and it is absolutely true. You can lay this stuff on upside down, backwards with the wind blowing, it doesn't matter, and it comes out looking amazing. I had absolutely no prep work on this, no sanding whatsoever, and uh, it's very durable, the scratches as well, so spend the extra couple dollars and get the Krylon if you're going to do anything with plastic, I highly recommend it. The other thing I got done off camera, I ended up rolling it back outside. I found mud and debris trapped in some of these cracks and, and down in here where I didn't get. Uh, and I wanted to pull the floor mat up and I'm glad I did because that looked like the muddy Mississippi underneath there. It was just full of mud and caked in there. So I got the pressure washer in and cleaned most of that out. The reason I had to do that is we're going to run our headlight harness. Uh, up through there for our front headlights obviously and we got to have the floor mat out for that so we'll show you that here in just a second but our tail light harnesses will run through these holes on each side and we'll get some of that in so you can see how that works I've got this great big mess of wiring harness that might be a little intimidating at first but uh, it's pretty self-explanatory um, we're going to pull this harness apart I'll show you just how easy it is to install. Uh, this front section here is going to run through where we pull our floor mat up for our front headlights. That's going to go back here and branch off one harness on each side for the tail lights. And then there's a few other harnesses that are going to plug in uh, up front under the dash, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So I'll set that aside. Right now I'm going to run the harness through to the tail lights. So I've got our harness laid out, uh, passenger side, tail light harness, did the same thing on the driver's side. Just tucked everything down in between the batteries. I'll come back through later with zip ties and get everything in place the way I want it. I'm going to loosen up this front um, trim piece here. There's three Torx heads bolts. That way it'll allow us uh, clearance to get our wiring harness up underneath as well as our secondary harness which we need to run for the brake lights so that way when you hit the brakes the brake lights will come on. So I found some more surprises. Um, when I went to plug in the wiring harness for the brake lights pulled up this little escape hatch uh, and because I've never done a precedent before I probably would have done that when it was outside realizing there's a whole big area under here for dirt and debris and everything to get trapped in so I'm gonna run it back outside and I'll probably just take the garden hose and try to flush that out as best I can rather than pressure wash it and make a mess but we'll get that cleaned out and get it back inside so we can start with our assembly on our body so after pulling in and out of the garage about three times to get the mud and sand and debris out, I've pulled it in and we're going to reattach the brow. We're also going to attach this uh, metal bracket which helps support the new um, longer front end if you will. So we'll get started on that. trial fitting but you can already see how it's going to dramatically change the look of this car so let me show you what else I've got in mind here so you can kind of get a visual we're actually going to install this uh, it's also a Mad Jacks brush guard on the front that's going to really give us that rugged look it could be great for off-roading or hunting or just cruising the neighborhood and, and looking mean and tough so We'll keep plugging away. So 
So I've got the rear body just kind of sitting there just so I could get a visual. I'm not going to put it all the way on. Uh, this body actually came, I don't know if you can see it, uh, cracked right there behind the seat. I got a hold of the company and they're actually sending me a replacement rear body. So I'm not going to go any further with the installation on that. I do have the front just also kind of sitting there. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Cart Crazy. I was hoping to get a lot farther, but I just plain ran out of time. The cleaning took a lot longer than I thought. But at least we have a visual of where we're at, what it's going to look like with the bowl bar, what it's going to look like with the rear body, although we're getting that replaced. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time on Cart Crazy.